Hey Squids, it's Hank here from Nintendo. In one of the past episodes of Think Tank, I discussed the value of killing in Splatoon. But how can one even acquire these kills in the first place? In this two-part episode of Think Tank, I'm teaming up with Exultant's FLC to tell you Squids how to get the perfect shot. Now, there are multiple facets that go into actually getting this perfect shot. You might think that hitting good shots or outshooting your opponent solely relies on your aiming skill. You would be right if you were talking about a fair fight, but Splatoon is a shooter, and if you are taking fair fights in a shooter, you are doing it wrong. So today, we are starting with positioning and movement to show you guys how to make these fights unfair. And in a future episode of Think Tank, we will cover aiming. Movement and positioning are the two most fundamental aspects of getting the perfect shot. Positioning is really about initiative. You want to ensure that you are the one instigating any conflicts. In the most ideal situation, anyone that wants to shoot you has to be in your line of sight and your range to do so. The key you must keep in mind to achieve ideal positioning in Splatoon is ink. Ink explicitly tells you where and where not to stand. You do not stand in enemy ink or even near the edge of enemy ink. Instead, where possible, you stand in your own ink with nothing but your own ink behind you. This helps ensure that you get the initiative off of any engagements. Again, you want to be the person that is instigating firefights, not your opponent. As you push forward, make sure you always cover your opponent's ink from a safe place. Just remember not to walk into the open and ink, as chargers will be able to punish you if you do. You should get into the habit of stopping for a moment every couple of seconds to check your surroundings for a potential flank. If you follow these guidelines, you will be able to move forward carefully without exposing yourself, and you will also be able to get into the proper position to get a perfect shot. Beyond progressing forward into your enemy's turf, it is also imperative that you cover but do not stand near your teammates. You want shots on the people your teammates are shooting, but you do not want to be anywhere near these teammates. Otherwise, a push from your opponents might take both of you out. Coordinating your positioning with your teammates under these circumstances is quite simple. If you outrange the enemy, you should draw attention away from your teammate so he or she can come in from the side. If you are the inkling that is outranged, you should let your teammate divert the enemy's attention while you come in and shoot from a new angle. Hey guys, FLC here. So I just wanted to demonstrate some of the things that Hank has been speaking about in this video just with this short clip of me using the 96 Deco on Walleye Warehouse. So I'm just going to do my standard mid roll out here. I just wanted to show the 96 Deco in particular because it has the splash wall as a sub weapon, yeah? So you have to be on top of your game at all times. So just getting my splash wall around the corner like that gives me some nice cover when I'm peeking around the corner and oh, hang on. Oh, oh dear. I'm getting shot from the side here. Ah, oh, that's not good. So, why did that just go so badly wrong? Well, let's take a look at that clip again, except this time we're going to focus on the things that I should have been able to notice that would have helped me position myself better. So the first thing that you can do at the start of every game is check out the other team's weapons. Now this isn't just so that you know what you're going up against, it's also because you can predict quite a bit about how the other team is likely to play when you know what weapon they're using. So what do we see in this picture? The eye-catching things are of course the two charges that they have, which means it's very likely that one person is going to be on the mid crate, almost certainly the Elita, while the other charger could be on one of the drop downs on the right hand side of the map, or on the ground somewhere in mid. Also, they have two gals. Now, we can't really tell what the gal in the back is. It could be a regular 96 or it could be a regular 52. Either way, they're generally frontline weapons, so you can expect to see at least one of them in mid. So while you're rolling out to mid, there are some other things that you can take a look at. Now naturally, the gamepad is probably the best thing to do. You can look at the gamepad and see where the ink trails are. You can generally match ink trails to weapons fairly easily, especially with things like charges and rollers. And also, off in the distance, you can actually see some of the muzzle flashes from the weapons that are currently rolling out from the enemy team. So right here, we actually see the muzzle flashes from one of the gals, which indicates that they're either going to mid or they're going down one of the alleys. So as we reach mid, we can see that the predictions were more more or less correct. The 52 gal has come straight to mid and put a wall down. One of the charges has taken up residence on the crate, although it was the other charger from what I was expecting. And the second charger is of course down on the low ground. 
So hang on, we're missing something here though. We've got three people in mid out of the four that we predicted would be there. So where's the fourth? Now, the fact that he's not showing up at all means that he's probably taking a slower path through the map. Now, there's only one slower path on this map, and that's the one that leads directly behind where I'm standing. So, as we round the corner here, we actually see two things. First of all, my team has secured the enemy team's alley, or at least is firing through it, which means that the 96 gal is most likely not there. Also, the 52 gal has actually started to push forward a little bit. You can see the shots coming through which means that I'm actually in a really bad situation right now. And of course, as we all saw, that's exactly what happens. The 96 girl comes in from behind me, the 52 girl comes in from the side, and I get pincered and just taken out like it's nothing. And this is entirely because I was not careful with my positioning. As FLC said, figuring out what weapons your opponents are using and where they are on your gamepad can be very helpful. For example, right here we can see that the opposing team has a roller, an e-leader, a blaster, and a splatter shot. The frequent bursts of ink on the leftmost path indicates that the blaster is getting ready for a flank. The occasional straight lines of ink in the left middle path tells us that the e-leader is getting ready to threaten someone on my team that is attempting to capture the splat zone. The smooth wide ink trail in the right middle path and the quick sloppy ink trail in the rightmost path indicate that the roller and the splatter shot are getting ready to capture their own zone. Now onto movement, simply put, Movement in Splatoon is all about options. Because of this, how much ink your weapon can spread is a very important factor you should consider. If your weapon puts down more ink than the weapon of the inkling you are shooting at, you can gain a movement advantage. And this is invaluable in firefights as it allows you to nullify your opponent's range advantage. Now, contrary to popular belief, jumping and shooting is usually not ideal for most shooter class weapons beyond a certain range, as your landing is extremely predictable. Instead, you should be mixing up your shots with squidding in the ink. This makes it difficult for your opponent to hit you, and makes it especially difficult for your opponent to predict where you will move next. There are also many movement options, such as splatter dashing and splatter hopping, that can assist you with moving around the map in less than ideal situations. It can also be very effective to super jump out of fights into safe positions. That's everything for this episode of Think Tank. For more videos like this, including the last episode where I covered the utility of damage up, please consider subscribing. If this video helped you out, or if you just enjoyed it, please consider hitting that like button and sharing it with your friends to teach them a thing or two about positioning. Before I go, I want to thank FLC from Exultants for assisting me with this episode. As you guys can tell, he has a lot of insight to share regarding Splatoon, so you should all keep an eye out for him and and his team in the next Splatoon tournament. Well, that's all for now. I hope this video helped you out, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.